This episode of MMPQB is brought to you by Susan Barnett, licensed associate broker with Keller Williams Upstate Country Properties at 31 Main Street, Oneonta, New York. She's a member of the Otsego Delaware Board of Realtors, as well as the NYS Multiple Listing Service. Find her online at upstatecountryrealty.com. Good advice, great service. It's better upstate. Welcome back to another episode of MMPQB, the show where I try to get music industry professionals to go off topic. I'm your host, MK. If you like the show, please throw it a rate or a subscribe on the podcast platform of your choice. iTunes is always a good one. Um, You can find us online at moremusicpodcast.com. Follow me on Instagram at moremusic.podcast. And uh, Facebook as well, all the usual stuff. Enjoy the show, and uh, thanks again to Dylan Emmett for joining me on this episode. On the line with me this morning, one of my very rare morning interviews, (laughs) it's... uh, Friend of mine from the Hudson Valley, amazing singer, songwriter, producer, all around music dude, very talented guy, Dylan Emmett. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Last time I saw you was uh, face to face on the radio, I think. Was that just before COVID? Was that this year? It was, yeah. Yeah, man. So how have things been since then? Tell me your your 2020 story. (laughs) Yeah, it seems like a lifetime since then, doesn't it? It's pretty crazy. Yeah. But yeah, no, things have been good. It has definitely been a crazy year for me as it has for everyone else. Um, But honestly, like, I feel pretty lucky with the whole COVID situation. Um, For me, it hasn't, like, affected me nearly as much as other people. And um, this year, too, like, I moved into a new house and, like, set up a new studio. And that kind of put me out of commission anyway. And, like, so I kind of just, like, tried to make the best of it and just, like, have just locked myself in my studio and did the move and, you know, did a lot of transitionary stuff. So I'm feeling pretty good about 2021. That's good. Yeah. And you're you're still busy making music. You're putting out some new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Always putting out new music and just doing sessions all day, every day, writing for other artists, producing for other people too. So. Yeah. What else you got going on? What other projects do you have in the works? Like for, uh, I mean, possibly stuff you can't talk about if it's all, uh, you know, still. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm always wary about talking about stuff I'm doing with other people just because I don't know their release plans and stuff. But yeah. I can say that I have a few artists that I've made some stuff with that I think is going to be released in 2021, which I'm very excited about. Um, I've been definitely kind of just like just trying to connect with more people. And this year I've definitely stopped like doing that thing where I sell myself short and I've been going for bigger opportunities and, and getting them sometimes. Yeah. So I. Yeah, I think there's some exciting stuff around the corner. And just for my own artist stuff, too, that's, like, the thing I'm honestly most excited about because the new music I have coming out in 2021, I feel like I've finally, like, really made some songs that, like, that are super, super special and, like, what Dylan Emmett music is supposed to be. Um, So So definitely getting confused about that. You're hitting your stride. You feel like you've kind of found your, your, your direction in music. Yeah, I mean, I've had, like, a direction, and it's kind of been, like, it's an evolution of everything I've done, but it's more of just, like, I think I've gotten to the point, especially being full-time with music for a couple years now, and where it's, like, just doing sessions every single day and finishing so many songs has gotten me to a point where I'm just liking what I'm writing a lot better, and it's much easier to, like, really take what I'm feeling and put it into the music and not have like the struggle of like how to write songs and how to produce songs. Like I'm finally setting into that mode where it's literally just mad fun and flowy and just comes out and like, yeah, so it's cool. Wow. I'm uh, very jealous. That sounds great. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad to hear you say that, uh, you know, you're kind of putting yourself out there for some bigger opportunities and like having that boldness pay off. You know, I was talking to somebody else about this recently about how like, it's so easy to just assume that you're not going to get things, you know, or assume that you're not good enough for something and just not ever even put yourself out there for it. And really, you know, a lot of life is just about putting your name out there and, you know, asking the question. And sometimes the answer is going to be no, but sometimes the answer is going to be yes. And it can lead to such amazing things. So that's something that I'm really trying to, like, keep in mind and, uh, you know, 
push myself to do more, take bigger risks, you know, reach out to that person, that, that musician that I've loved for years that I didn't think would want to be on my podcast. And like, maybe they do, you know, like you never know until you ask. It's so true. Like, I don't know what it was, but a few, like a while back, I saw someone tweeted, like, you miss every shot you don't take. And I've like heard that a hundred times, but like, for some reason it really ingrained in me, especially like just being in the business for a while now and realizing, just seeing so many of my friends like do that, like they've stepped out and took that big risk and it's paid off. So like, it is kind of crazy too, because everybody has that like, you know, um, imposter syndrome thing going on. Like I've been producing music literally my whole life and I still have it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, um, but that shit can really, oh, am I allowed to curse? Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So, but yeah, that, that really limits you because like, you'd be amazed. Like, I'll tell you one story that's pretty cool. It didn't actually end up amounting to anything, but like, I have this like side electronic project called Nimbus and we were sending out our first songs to labels to see like if anybody would be interesting or interested in maybe like uh, working with us on the release. And I literally just like emailed Steve Aoki um, and like did not expect to get an answer. And he actually answered me back and like sent me to his A&R team. Oh, nice. And that was kind of the first one where I was like, whole, whoa, like you can literally just e email people. And so then I started doing it. And now like every Monday I just sit down and spend like an hour going for those big opportunities, you know? That's genius. And, uh, yeah. To like, to structure it like that too. And to say like, I'm going to take this hour and it's like one hour a week and just do it. Just, you know, dream big, send out the emails to the people that you think are too big to respond. But once in a while, somebody will. Yeah. It's honestly, it's kind of crazy. And even like, cause with the music business too, it's like, I'll even like, cause that's just half, that's like the first part of the battle. Like even meeting with someone and getting in the room, that's the first step. And then you have to make a song that is really dope and that they're going to love. And like, that is kind of, you can't control that as much, you know, Yeah. but um, all of it pays off because in the end, even like there, I've had a bunch of sessions that were really great. I'm not sure if they're going to end up being releases, but like a year lead later, they'll connect me with some other artist that does turn into something. And it just like, just getting yourself out there and meeting more people I've realized is such a, a huge part of this too. Oh you my know? God. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I've, sp I've spoken to so many artists and other people in, in the industry or even in other industries, you know, this is not even just music industry specific, but where I'll be like, wow, you know, that's amazing that you worked with that producer or that person like how did you end up you know getting to do that and a lot of the time the answer is like I just reached out and I said I love their work and I wanted to work with them and you know it took a while but they got back to me and it you know it all came together and like yeah like you said sometimes it's not even that direct connection sometimes it's just like getting on somebody's radar and then they put you in touch with someone else like yeah that's really I feel like this is the lesson that the universe is throwing at me because this seems to be coming up again and again where it's like just just try just ask Oh my God. I feel that. I feel like the universe is pushing this on me too. And it's like, it's interesting too, because now I'm kind of on the other side of it a little bit too, because like as my artist project and fan base is growing, I've started to get more and more people hitting me up to work with me. And like, it's funny because you always think it's going to be such an imposition, but then when it's me on the other foot, like I'm always so honored that someone would take the time to send me their beats or like to reach out with me. I always answer and always I'm like, it's never like an annoying thing. It's like a good thing. And I've kind of been trying to like internalize that and just remember that like, especially cause if you're writing cold emails, that's one thing like people don't like that, but I never do that. Like anytime I'm writing an email, it's personal. Like I say, like it was this song that got me really into your music and I'm such a fan. And I just, I really think we can make something dope together. And like with anything, like you said, not just music, but if you come at people like that with respect and showing that like, it's not just you're just trying to take from them or whatever that it really is like you are about this person or this artist or this whatever they're doing you know like that goes a really long way and i think sometimes people think that like like myself like that it's like an imposition but really it's it's kind of like an honor you yeah. know oh it's super flattering and i totally agree with you that when it, you know the roles are reversed and somebody approaches me with something you know whether it was like when I was on the radio and somebody would want, you know, like airplay or whatever, like, I, I don't know, like, just if that was me as an artist, I feel like I would be like, oh, you know, this is going to be so annoying for them to, to get this request. And what if my song's not good enough? But like, no, like as the person in the position of like, you know, having the you know access to radio airplay, it was like, no, please send me your stuff. I love it. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm honored to be in this position and I'm flattered that you thought of me as a person who could, you know, listen to your song and do something with it. Like, yeah, it's always... The imposter syndrome is so real and, you know, very much so for me, always has been, you know, even yeah. like everything I do as a, as a radio person, I, I always felt like, 
I was faking it till I made it. <laughs> and I know that's how everybody yeah. feels. And like, as a podcaster, it's the same thing. I'm always like, ah, I got a podcast, but it's not, it's, it's nothing. It's blah, blah, blah. But like, it's not, it's a thing that I work hard on and you know, that people listen to and enjoy and want to be on. And yeah, like it's, it's still intensely flattering when somebody wants to be on my show or listen to my show. Totally. And yeah, it's like, on top of that too, Oh wait, I might be for totally ADDing and forgetting what I was going to say. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> oh, it happens to me quite a bit. Yeah, same. Um, yeah, I don't know what I was going to say. Never mind. <laughs> um, anything else on imposter syndrome? Because this is actually something that I feel like is so real in everybody's life. And I, it's never really come up too much on the show before, which is interesting. Because I think that if I went back and called everybody who's ever been on this show and was like, hey, have you ever ex experienced imposter syndrome? Every one of them would say yes. Yeah. The crazy thing is, though, is, like, I'll, I'll say this on imposter syndrome of just because I'm still, like, working through it in ways, like, there's days, especially as someone who has, like, anxiety sometimes, like, there's certain days where I just, like, am worried about what I'm doing. And, like, I have this new mantra. It's really simple, but I'll just, like, remind myself, like, no, dude, you can do this. And, like, um, just that kind of simple thing. I've honestly worked a lot in, like, meditation and all sorts of stuff to, like, get at the root causes of why I feel like that. But at a certain point, it's also, it's just like practicing it too. And enough, like after a while, like I feel like I went through this period where as I started to get like with bigger writers and artists, it seemed like every day when I was doing, I was like deadly scared to do and so nervous about it, right? Like I'd have a session like at five o'clock and the whole day I'd just be wondering like if I was gonna do good on that session. But you have that happen enough when you throw yourself into it where you're just in that position every day, every day. And eventually you just realize like, hey, we get a song every time, <laughs> you yeah, know? Totally. Like it works out every time. And even in the rare sessions where you don't vibe and it doesn't connect like, um, I don't take it as personally anymore because I'm just doing it all the time. So I definitely think a big part of it is just pushing yourself out of that comfort zone and then doing whatever you can, whether it's like meditation or affirmations or just whatever you can to like to support yourself in pushing off those thoughts when you have it and going for it anyway you know? Yeah, absolutely. I really relate to that. And again, I, you know, I'm thinking of my, my time in radio when I would be so nervous to interview somebody kind of well-known. And even if it wasn't like someone like, for example, the first person with like any kind of name recognition that I think I ever interviewed was, um, David Bromberg. And I was oh, like, wow. and I was so <laughs> nervous going in because I don't really know that much about David Bromberg. I knew even less back then. And uh, I was just like, oh, my God, I'm going to, like, offend him somehow by not knowing enough about his work or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to screw this up, whatever. And, like, honestly, the interview was a little awkward. It wasn't it wasn't great, but it was fine. Like, we both survived. Uh, nobody was mortally offended. Like, we got through it and, you know, he plugged what he came to plug, whatever the show was. And, uh, you know, and yeah, like you said, the more I did it the more it was just like, okay, I'm going to interview the string cheese incident today. And like, that's what I'm going to do. And like, I'm not going to not do it. So I guess I'm going to have to do it and figure it out. And yeah, like the more you do it, the easier it gets and you just stop being intimidated by things. But I mean, that's not even accurate. You don't stop being intimidated. You just learn to stop thinking about how intimidated you are and just get it done. Yeah, I don't know if that's ever going to, I think it might depend on the personality too, because I know some people who are so confident yeah. and like overly confident, like they're not even as good as they think they are. And then I know people who are the most humble and they're so talented, it's like scary, Yeah, you know, but, but it is kind of interesting how sometimes I see people get those opportunities when more talented people were in for that opportunity too, but it's because of that confidence and just the way they approach it, you know? Yeah. And like, I liked another thing you said there too, because I feel like this has been a big part of it, like. I don't know if you've ever been the type of person to like beat yourself up about stuff like with that bad interview like in the past myself like i would let those experiences like be like oh man well like push me back a little bit and make me be like well maybe i'm not like where i think i am and one of the biggest things i've learned is like looking at anytime you mess something up or even if it's not messed up like don't do as well as you think like it is a learning experience like you said like the lesson of that interview was that you got through it and realized you both were fine in the end and like yeah. you moved on and there were many more interviews to come you know like that's a really important t like the way you talk to yourself and the way that you you know give yourself a break as you're learning like um there's this uh there's this like concept this guy tom bilyeu that i watch all the time and he's always talking about neuroplasticity mm -hmm. and it's basically like your thoughts 
literally what you think makes like brain like paths in your brain so like if you're used to thinking confident things and you like make it a point to think that like it actually makes the grooves in your brain easier for your emotions to go th towards that path right yeah and you can kind of like train yourself to to have a different mindset and like it's not easy like that sounds way easier than it is i've been working on it for years and it's still very hard but like but that idea one thing that really helps i think is to is to if you can get that in your head even if it's just lo logic not in your heart like even if you're still upset about it but if you can tell yourself like no there was value in this and it was a learning experience that's gold because now i'm getting to the point after doing it for a while where i'll mess up something big and literally just like not care you know, and, yeah. and, or I'll care for like, instead of beating myself up for like two days about it, it'll be like an hour. And I'm like, no, you know, this was a good lesson and move on. Yeah, and it, absolutely. And, you know, there's no value in continuing to dwell on it. There's no, it doesn't help, you know, you can't change whatever mistake or whatever you wish you had done differently by worrying about it and beating yourself up over it. It just is what it is. So as hard as it can be, sometimes the, the thing to do is just to leave it in the past. Totally. Like, honestly, the be like, I feel like I would be the best off personally if I could just get rid of all of those thoughts and just go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, any of these thoughts, like, even as, a, as an artist, too, like, and this year as well, because it's like, it's weird because my goal in life is to, like, play stadiums. And, like, even if I was to blow up on some massive scale right now, like, I couldn't. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> it kind of puts you in a position where you're like, wait, what am I actually doing right now? You know? But it's like, I think that for me personally, like that stuff has held me back a lot. And j even in just enjoying life, like I've spent a lot of years just like worrying about making it and how I'm going to make this my career and like not enjoying the times when I'm out with my friends doing stuff because that's in the back of my mind. And just like my whole goal in life is to let as much of that stuff go. And just like when it comes to that, just be like, no, dude, you can do it. And like try and get back on the vibe of like either I'm going to have faith about it and let it go or I'm just going to put it to the side right now because I know this isn't how I really feel, you know? Yeah. It's like just the momentary down or whatever. Totally. It's all about, you know, having control over your own thought patterns. And yeah, I love the, uh, the neuroplasticity thing coming up because that's something else I've been thinking about a lot lately. And it is so powerful and so... You know, it's scientific, it's physiological, it's real. You know, this is not, uh, you know, spiritualism. I mean, there's there's maybe a component of that, but, like, this is real science that, you know, you can train your brain to work differently, and it's really, really hard. You know, I'm not downplaying how hard it is at all. Um, you know, I, I certainly don't want to be one of those people who looks at, like, somebody who's struggling with their mental health and is like, well, you just need a positive outlook. Because, like, of course it's not that easy, and sometimes there are, you know, neurotransmitter issues that, you know, need, like, medication to be helped along, whatever. Like, certainly yeah. not telling people that, like, just buck up and you'll be fine. But, like, for a lot of, you know, just general anxiety and and you know like and i myself am so so bad about this right now and there's been times in my life when i was really good at it like i think specifically of this one summer when i was working in the mountains and i was like you know i was also getting a ton of fresh air and exercise and sunshine and was physically extremely healthy which of course helped a lot um but i just was also practicing mindfulness and practicing you know, controlling my, just the way I looked at things, my perspective on things, which, you know, in turn basically controlled my emotions. And like, for example, there's this one story that I always think of when I'm like trying to remind myself that this is possible, where I was having a really, really bad day. I was like alone in the mountains. The weather was terrible. Um, I'd been alone for a couple of days. So I was like lonely and starting to go a little stir crazy. Um, you know, my boots were soaked, I was out of clean clothes, like, everything was just shitty, I was cold, and, uh, you know, I, but I had to, like, be out there for a couple more days, and I was, like, hiking up this mountain pass, and, like, just the trail conditions were terrible, and everything sucked, and I was in just a foul, foul mood, and then I was, like, you know, I was just having such a shitty time, all because of how I was reacting to external stimuli, and I finally was just like, dude, like, let me stop, let me take a breath, let me rethink this. Nothing that's going on right now is that bad. Like, okay, I'm wet and chilly, like, but I'm not gonna get any wetter or chillier, you know? Like, things are just, this is just how it is right now, and this is just, like, physical discomfort. When I look at it, like, I'm still in these beautiful Adirondack mountains, like, you know, breathing this yeah. clean air and like, you know, my job is to just like be in the woods right now, which I love. And like, I just totally changed how I was thinking about it. And my entire mood shifted. Like, I mean, 
I'm not saying I could necessarily do this as strongly now because I'm not as in practice as I was then, but like I literally went from being in the worst mood to being in the best mood. And I was just like singing a little song and like just having a great time. <laughs> and like, yeah, I, just, no, I, I love yeah. that. And honestly, there's two things you said that really, that I really love there. And like, and it's, it's actually a beautiful freeing thing when you realize before I'd say that though, do you believe in the law of attraction? Is that what you were talking about with the spirituality aspect of it? Yes or like no, I, I think maybe there's, stuff? I think there might be something to it. Um, I am, I don't know. I'm, I'm in a weird place right now where like, I, I don't believe in anything all that strongly. <laughs> Yeah, I, honestly, I go through times like that, too. What, what did you mean when you said spirituality, like with the neuroplasticity thing? Um, I guess, yeah, that is what I'm talking about, that like there is a component of it when you're thinking about that that is, um, you know, like a little bit beyond the physiological. And, you know, I, I do in the past and still now, but maybe less intensely, I do believe in, you know, certain truths about the universe that I, I feel like I've I've seen evidence of myself, including like, everything kind of being one you know what i mean and everything being like connected in this way where i guess the law of attraction would make a lot of sense from that perspective because it's really just like strengthening a pre-existing connection yeah honestly okay so here's where i'll take it with you because one of the things the neuroplasticity thing really helped me because especially for anybody out there who like if you ever have those kind of thoughts like when a failure happens or when you're in one of those moods where you're feeling like you can't do stuff or, or like you're, it's just hopeless you know like you've just like hit that rut and you're just like i don't know where to go and it just it's not working and maybe i just suck right mm -hmm. and it's like that was such a freeing thing for me because i thought that that was just innate to my personality i'm like here i go again you know, hating on myself and not believing in myself, I guess that's just who I am. And like, the funny thing is about the neuroplasticity thing, and it plays into the law of attraction because like, it is the science that kind of proves it in a, in, in a way, because the fact is, is it's like, once I figured out, like, and read that book where it was like, uh, or, or actually, I didn't, I didn't actually read the book, but I read about the book that Tom had read. Um, it's on my list. But once he had gotten that concept that like, this actually isn't who I am. It's part of the habits that I formed about the way I think about stuff. And like, it's not the kind of thing that you can just turn off. It's actually something you have to practice. Like I've done a lot of stuff. Like one thing I do a lot is affirmations. And like, literally I spend like 10 minutes in the morning, just like reprogramming myself and telling myself stuff that I want to get into my belief system. Whether it's like that, even that one thing I said, like I can do this, that's been my one for this week and it's been really helping me because I just went through a period where I was kind of like, just overwhelmed and like, how am I gonna ever pull all this stuff that I'm facing down off? But like, it's just, it's it's funny because it's it's a beautiful gift when you realize, hey, it's not actually innate to who I am. I'm not just like stuck in this thought pattern. Like I could learn to look at things differently, you know? Yeah. And um, like you said, like the more you do that, it's all about like the enjoyment of life too. Like the more that you can get out of your head and just like be in what you're doing um, and be positive about it, you feel better all around, right? And I think that that's where the law of attraction comes in where it's like, all these opportunities, I'm not, I don't know if it's the universe bringing it to you or what, which I do kind of believe as well, like your energy brings stuff to you. But I think that that has a big part of it where it's just like, if you are used to, in, if you can train yourself to, to push past those moments of doubt or to believe in yourself or even just things like, you know, you can, you can really work on this skill of, of, uh, is basically my point. And that was a game changer for me because I thought I was just stuck in my mind and like how my thoughts work. And I guess like my family patterns and all this shit, I guess I'm just like damaged, right? But it's like so not true. Like if you really can like make the decision to like do things and try and change your habits of doing that. And that was just really helpful for me because before that I thought I was just stuck. And now I know that like, even when it's hard, even though I've done it for years and in some ways I still it still doesn't work, I know it's there. You know, and I know people, I see people who have done this and it's allowed them to enjoy their life so much more, you yeah. know? So that's like, that's what I'm working towards. That's amazing. Yeah. And the enjoyment of life thing, like that's so huge. And that's, God, I mean, aren't we all just like trying to figure out how to enjoy life? Like that's really like what it all comes down to. We're all just trying to figure out like, how do I like being alive? Like, what do I need to do? And And most of the time we go to like, you know, our career, our purpose in life. Like, I'm not happy, I'm not satisfied because I'm not fulfilling my purpose or I'm not, you know, doing something cool enough with my life that makes me feel good. 
And then like once in a while, and I'm very guilty of that too. And especially now when we're in this weird uncertain time where like, I don't have a real job currently. <laughs> and like, you know, I, I spend a good amount of time thinking like, okay, like, what am I going to do? How am I going to get back on track? And then once in a blue moon, I'll just have this moment of clarity where I'm like, actually, like, I'm fine. Like, I'm happy. Like, I have, like, a nice home and a nice partner and dogs and stuff. And, like, you know, yeah, things will work themselves out as far as, like, making money. Like, I'll figure something out there. But, like, I don't have to compare myself to anybody else. I don't have to compare myself to myself a year ago, you know? Like, it's it's just, it's just, I don't, like, this, I and I, I've lost it even just talking about it. Like, for a moment, thinking about it while you were talking, I was like, yeah, this concept. And now it's it's already slipped away. It's like these moments of clarity. <laughs> Do you ever get those? Yeah. Oh, I get it all the time. And I also, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I haven't conquered this. Like, I battle with it so much. And, like, but the difference is, is I do go through these periods where I get out of my head. And so I know that's where I want to go, <laughs> you <Yeah>. know? <laughs> and, like, but, like, as you said, like, that's been a big thing for me, especially, like, having my daughter. Um, and I don't know if you, like, if I've ever talked to you about my story, but, like, I didn't know about my daughter until she she was already two years old. And I was living across the country in L.A. when I found out I had a daughter. Oh, I didn't know that. And so... Yeah, no, it's a pretty crazy story. Um, and, like, I had always dreamed of moving to L.A. And, like, my plan was to live there for the rest of my life. I'd always plan on it. And it's just crazy how the universe was like, nope, that's not what's happening. And it really rocked me for a while. But she's been a, a really big gift because other before her, like, I obviously love my family and this and that. But there was nothing that could take me out of that headspace of, like, music is the most important thing, right? And then all of a sudden, I had her in my life. And she was the thing that started this for me to actually be able to be like, you know, if uh, if anything happened with her, that would be like the end. Like I would be so it would be so much worse than any of this other shit I'm thinking about. Yeah. That it's like it just puts this like little bit of perspective. And also like I'd before that I'd always tend to just be in my head. Even like I said, like chilling with friends. Like I'd always just be thinking about how I can do this and blah 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 blah. Just like talking to myself all the time and being with her like it's taken me out of that for the first time where I'm really just like in the moment you know and yeah. enjoying it and not caring about that stuff and so like like you said like finding those things in your life that are your support system and treating yourself with care too like whether it's healthy food or when you need that rest getting it like all these things play into this image of yourself and the thoughts you have of yourself and it's like but the cool thing is is it's like it, it can be uh it can sound like a jail sentence, but, or it can be, you know, the truth is, is wherever you are in life, you can work on this, you know, and it's a skill. It's a skill to look at your situation and not have, you know, a steady plan or income for the moment and like whatever the situation is and to be able to just like be happy anyway, but it's worth it to work on that skill, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think of like, Maybe the first time that I, I kind of had one of these moments of, like, seeing the truth about things, which was in high school. And, like, I was, you know, when you're in high school, and especially as a girl, like, be, like appearance is such a big thing. And I was always, like, that was always a big thing for me because I always felt like I wasn't pretty enough. I wasn't, you know, like, it just, it, it, a lot of it was about, like, appearance for me when I was younger. That was, like, a big, like, source of anxiety and stress for me. And there was a girl in my class who I thought was so, so beautiful. And I just would think, like, man, if I could just look like her, everything would be fine. My whole life would be great. Like, you know, and it, like, caused me, like, anguish just, you know, looking at this other person who had nothing to do with me and thinking, like, you know, just how much I wished I looked like that. And then, like, one day I was, like, in the middle of one of those, you know, and it's not even like I had, like, a conscious desire to go down this thought pattern. It was just, like, a thing that would happen to me over the course of the day. And one day I was, like, in that thought pattern and out of nowhere – this thought just hit me like like it came externally almost that was just like so what like she looks like that you look like this you're both just living your lives like it doesn't matter like she's over there you're over here like it's got you know what I mean like for the first time I was like oh oh it doesn't matter <laughs> and yeah, like well it, that's so funny you say that too because I remember when we because we were in the same class at Uck and I thought you were so pretty oh thanks and that's just really funny how you just like <laughs> yeah but you never know what else is going on in someone's head like I've I've seen that a lot of the people that I've like looked up to are friends of mine or I'm like, oh man, they're killing it right now. They've gotten this or they've gotten that. And then I talk to them and they're like, oh no, that was all a sham. It was just for an Instagram post. Like I'm so depressed. <laughs> oh God. You know? like, yeah. It's Instagram's crazy. the worst. Instagram's the worst. Cause yeah, so many times you'll see like, and like, I, I try not to do it too much, but it, the temptation is there to like take these 
these good looking moments of your life and just like, you know, curate them and put them up and be like, yes, this is what my life is all the time. This beautiful hike that I took and just this nice moment and blah, blah, blah. And like really, you know, day to day, everybody's struggling. Everybody's got, you know, shit in their head that they wish wasn't there. And, you know, then we, we choose to present this version of ourselves to the world. And it's yeah, like I, I, I really... I try not to do that because I feel like it's it's just as bad for you as it is for everybody else. Facts. I honestly like now that you bring it up, social media is probably one of the worst things for every against everything we're talking about. And even myself, like to this day, like I'd say about half the time where I'm triggered into one of those thought patterns where I'm feeling like I'm not good enough is because I see someone else I know doing getting the thing that I want, whether it's like New Music Friday on Spotify or a record deal or you know whatever it is like and and not saying I'm always happy I if anybody who knows me knows that I'm like the most supportive person my friends and like but I'm not gonna lie like it does awaken a thing in me sometimes where it's like well why isn't that happened to me maybe yeah. it's not but like exactly what you said like you know you're sitting there thinking that you're not the pretty girl in class half the, the class is like you are the pretty girl in class <laughs> yeah. you know and there's probably other girls that are looking at you like I wish I was as pretty as her you know and it's like everybody's on their own path and um, that comparison thing, it's a trap that it's really hard to resist. Like, I don't know how to, especially if you have to post on social media for like your job and stuff, like it's really, really hard, but that is definitely, I'm glad to hear that you're trying to get away from that too, because it is, it's like, and, and the truth is, is like, I cannot tell you how many times in those situations I've like reached out to people or seen my friends, like, you know, having the, the exact thing that I wish happened to me happen, but it ends up being like not as great as you think it's going to be. Like, there's a lot of people who are living the life you think you want to be living who are miserable. Yeah. Miserable. And that's where it's like actually being happy in what you're doing day to day really pays off. You know, it's like you might actually be way happier in your nine to five job with your good relationship and your kids. Like, you might not have to have, and you might be way happier than those people you look at with the cars and the clothes or the success or whatever. And you just, but but it's so sad for you to be sitting in your kitchen wishing you were them when you don't even realize you're the happy one and they're not. Oh, totally. You know? And that's why, you know, things like Anthony Bourdain's passing hit us so hard because it's like you look at this person whose life is traveling and eating food and, you know, being famous and everybody loves him who is still deeply, deeply unhappy. And, you know, like that's it's it's terrible and it's tragic, but it also kind of reminds all of us like, hey, like it's not about getting the stuff. The stuff will not make you happy, whether it's physical stuff and wealth or, or the stuff of like fame and recognition and stuff like that. Like it, it's not, it all still comes from inside you. And you know, like you said, like you could be working a nine to five, you could be working, you know, at a retail job, whatever. But if you're happy within yourself, you could be happier than somebody, you know, who's rich and famous and has everything, but their mental health is in an order. Yeah, like sometimes I feel like sometimes having everything can be the worst thing for you, honestly. Yeah, like it's it's really, nothing it's really crazy want. like that. But yeah, here's the other thing I've learned too, because like I've had so many things. I don't know if it's like I'm sure it's like this in other areas of business too. But like so, like two years ago, right? The stuff that I wished I was doing, I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. But like it's so funny how as soon as you get to that next level you're just like oh i want to be at the level above that it's literally like two seconds like yeah. i will be like um you know i the first time i had one of my songs on new music friday on spotify it was like this huge thing but it was like for the afternoon and then i was like well how do i get on a, one of the really big playlists yep. you know what i mean or like <laughs> it's like you get the the, ar the article you wanted on billboard and then it's just like all right i've been on billboard what else can i get that's better like and that's another thing i've noticed within myself where it's like and i feel it now like I'm, I'm still not where I want to be and I'm highly motivated, but like I'm finally locking into the right reasons. Like I'm motivated because I want my music to help people. And that's why I got into it. And for a while, because you're a starving artist, it can be so easy to be like, no, I need success so I can stop being a starving artist. But now I'm like in that middle part where I'm not a starving artist and I know that big things are going to happen soon if I just keep going. And it, But it's kind of calmed me down a little bit and made me realize though that like, dude, like I've just seen it so many times like that I used to literally say, if I could just get this, then I'd be happy and then i get it and i'm instantly on to the next thing and i don't think that ends i think i could win three grammys and i'll just be like well next year i need five like mm -hmm. that is just human nature and like that's why that shit doesn't work in terms of happiness like because no matter what you get you can all you you'll always get another one but what it really comes down to is like what are your relationships like you know what are your support system do you have something like for me penelope was that it's like that is something that is so 
special to me and she brings me so much joy outside of music that it just like that that was worth it even if it fucked up my career for a little bit because i had to move across the country again and like be out of the main city like there was a lot of struggles that came with it but it is worth its weight in gold because it's pointed me in the direction of like what actually makes me happy you know yeah yeah like getting your actual real life in order and then also you know you're still able to work on your career and you're st still able to advance and yeah like like you were saying about you know it's never it's never going to be enough like whatever the next thing is and there's nothing wrong with wanting to take that next step and wanting to achieve that next marker in your career or whatever it is like if it's if it's getting on the new music friday playlist like you know yes want that absolutely have that as a goal but don't tie it to your self-worth don't tie it to your happiness don't say you know i'll be happy if only i can do this and that goes for anything you know it's i i have i and this has been me in the past too i you know when when people are single sometimes it's you know, oh, if I just had a partner, everything would be better. My life would be better. I would be happy. And then you get a partner and maybe they're great and you're still like not happy <laughs> and you still have yeah. the same, like the same struggles yeah. and the same issues. And it's, it's... no, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. You actually hang on one second. I'm going to close my closet door because my idiot dogs are fighting outside. Yeah, it's all good. I actually thought you stopped talking because it like froze for a minute and then I realized you're still talking. So my bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Closet is now closed. Hopefully the dogs will uh, be a little bit less noisy. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, just, yeah, point being, like, there's nothing wrong with wanting to achieve things and wanting to hit that next level, but just don't make the mistake of thinking that it will solve all your problems. Yeah, honestly, I'm trying to settle into this mode, and it's this is, like, a whole other level of hard, but, like, I read this really dope book called The Surrender Experiment, and, like, it's all about this guy who basically decides to like give up his job and like go live in the woods and just meditate like all day long and just like be a yogi. And he ends up becoming like the CEO of a Fortune 500 company and like changing the medical industry forever because he like he basically gets this inspiration to like code on on the first like computers and he creates this whole system for like doctors and people to use medical stuff on the internet like he started all that while meanwhile he was still like he would like be on private jets to these big business meetings and then come back and me he always meditated in his retreat in his little area in florida like every night and like he just lived this crazy life but like the whole point of that book is he like makes this decision where both the positive and the negative he's like i'm gonna do my best to just surrender to what the whatever the universe is giving me and like whether it's good or bad i'm not going to let it raise my my happiness in myself or let it bring my happiness down and i think that there's something to be said about that too because i've seen these moments in myself where good things happen and i get so hyped and excited but when that when that buzz wears off you know or like releasing a new song you get all this like adulation uh, for the first week of like the comments and this it's like a high you get and then it goes away and you're just like oh man like it's like an emptiness in you and like i've been trying to like do that a little bit too like even the good stuff just trying to be more level so that it's like so that when it's the good times or the bad times like i'm still just in the middle and living my life and being as happy as possible you know but it is it is so tough to not get um caught into either side the positive and the negative yeah, I feel like this is all what is meant by, you know, attachment. Like when, you know, people who study Buddhism talk about attachment and trying to let go of attachment. And it's such a hard concept to wrap your head around because, of course, the first thing we think of is like attachment to physical things. So you're like, OK, you know, I need to be an aesthetic and I need to go live in the woods and, and you know, eat berries and, you know, wear scraps of clothing. You know what I mean? Like that's the first place you go. But really, I think what's more powerful in letting go of attachment is letting go of things like yeah like desire for praise for your work and desire for you know like stuff like that like like more more i i, I don't know what the word is but like stuff that like dings you in a in a kind of soul way <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like, I, I totally feel what you're saying, and it's, it's honestly, like, it's impossible, like, I don't know how the hell that guy did that, he's a special person to be able to, like, get to that level, because in that book, too, like, he has crazy stuff that happens to him, but he just, like, literally, he'll just, in the middle of a meeting, start meditating, so that if he starts to get too emotionally attached to it, and, like, I don't think I'm ever going to be something like that, but the general idea of it is just, like, hey, what if, it like, you know, the fact, if I haven't released a song in three months, that will get me depressed, because it's been so long since I've 
ha I feel like I'm not moving anywhere. But the truth is, is like, it would be great if for those three months I could just keep feeling great and remember that like, you know, like just getting out of those habits. And so much of this stuff too is just like with the neuroplasticity thing, like it is just like the habit of how you think. But I, I don't know, like all I can say, because as you said in the beginning, like this can sound to people like, so just like, oh, just like get over it or just like forget about it. Like it really isn't like that. Like you have to practice yeah. being thinking about things differently. But um, to me, like, I don't know, it's it's so weird because I feel like my whole life, my main goal has been that success and to be, and to be you know, like, even though it's deep down for the good reason of just like, I want my music to help people. And there's nothing more important to me than like when fans, like I've had a couple of interactions with fans where like I've sent like them a t-shirt for free just because they've supported me so hard. And then we like talk on the phone or on Skype for a few minutes and like, they'll even like tell me some of their problems and like get support from me just being like, I don't know, it's just, that is like the coolest thing about this. And so like, I used to visualize like, you know, rocking big stadiums and stuff like that. And now I've changed my visualization to be the people in the audience, the way I am at a concert when they're like saving my life because it's just like, oh, all that hope and love and like that an artist can give to someone. Like that's what I'm trying to, to, to like keep in the center of my goals now. And even when I'm going for that success, it's like remembering that it's like, it feels much better when you're at the root of why you're doing it. And when you're like, you know what, it's okay. To, you're right. It is okay to want that success and all that stuff. Um, but it's, it, it's a beautiful thing when you want it because you know that that's the impact you can have in the world and you can really help people. Like it, it makes it easier to stay motivated too, because I find myself recently, you know, I can't do it all the time. Like honestly, I'd say 75% of the time I'm not in a good mindset, <laughs> you know, and I'm trying to get myself out of it. But like it does kind of level it off where like you said when you were in the woods and like you were just like wait why am i upset right now it's it's much easier to, to when you're centered on that real reason behind what you're doing to not get upset at those things because you're just like wait a second though i'm like so stressed about like that success part of the adulation but like uh, whenever I think about those kids that I've met with who are like my fans across the world who they've told me like legit my music has helped them that's the truth that means more to me than anything you know so just trying to focus on on, on that yeah that is a really great way of looking at things and I was thinking while you were saying that about like you know I'm, I'm a much more casual musician than you are you know I'm not really making a career out of it but like it is something that I love to do in non-COVID times I love to perform and you know, just play with my with my bands and it just feels really good. As you know, it feels really, really good when it's something you love to do. And um, yeah. yeah, like my the reason I find it so fulfilling, even though I don't have any like grand designs for it as a career or, you know, any expectation or really desire to like get famous from it is because my goal just like you was always to provide the experience that I crave as an audience member. You know, like what I love when I see live music is to dance, is to be moved to dance and to, you know, just like feel music in my body and, and have a great time and, you know, be unselfconscious on the dance floor. And like, that was always what I wanted to provide. Like that was, you know, and, and most of the bands that I'm in, like are dance bands, like, because that's the kind of music that I love to play for people. And I love to see people, you know, enjoying what we're doing and feeling what we're doing, like literally, you know, in the same moment with us, like responding in real time to what we're creating. And like, that is why it's so fulfilling, even though like sometimes I'll leave at the end of a long night at Snugs and maybe make like 20 bucks. And that's fine because, you know, I came to, you know, make myself happy and make some other people happy. And I did that mission accomplished. Great night. Yeah, no, that's the way to look at it, honestly. And like, I, I've, I've definitely like, I'm glad that I've done been doing this work and will continue to do this work to get out of the mind frame. Because I like, especially when you are like trying to do something as your career. Like I definitely went through a, a year, like years long period where my priorities with it weren't right because, but just out of fear, like once again, it's out of that fear that like, maybe I'm not good enough in the end or like maybe it won't work out. And that can drive you to be like, like I remember playing shows 
with like 50 people in the room and being like, man, why am I not at, I, like this? Why am I not having 300 person rooms like those other people? Like, man, I just like, and like instead now, like I look back at those times and I was like, yo, I wish I just had so much fun. Cause that was so fun. What the yeah. fuck was I thinking? You have 50 whole you people know? in the room. God damn. But, <laughs> if, but I get it too. I, I have sympathy for myself because it, especially having a kid now, like it does make sense that like those, those emotions aren't bad either, but it's just a matter of like, like those things can be good too and it's a part of it and it's the reality of who I am so I'm not going to say that like I'm just trying to like get those out of my thoughts but the beauty of it is is now looking back I realize like I've given up too much of my life in those moments where I could have been in the moment and happy and worrying and so my whole goal is just to like cut that time down as much as I can you know so yeah. like when I am in that position next time um that I just I take that deep breath for a minute and just remember like no man like this is you're gonna look back on this soon and miss it so enjoy it while you're here you know yeah absolutely absolutely and I mean music is such a an easy thing to do that with because the experience of playing music is so good in and of itself and you know the experience of performing is so good in and of itself so you know you can really focus on that in a real way of like even if I'm playing to 10 people if you know maybe next summer they're still we're still stuck doing like distanced outdoor stuff and like it's not the same but it's still you know you still got to go and play music in front of people and like that's what it's all about and you know of course it's easy to say that and then you walk away with you know your 20 bucks in your pocket and you're like well <laughs> you know it still yeah. doesn't pay my bills but yeah i don't know like it's it's you got to find that balance you do yeah it's like honestly the bet like it's it's really really hard and being in any field like what we're doing where you're just like making your career out of thin air like i don't have like a lot of my friends too like whether they're producers or artists, like a lot of them have management or a team. Like I'm doing all this stuff myself. And so it can get very easy to be like too business heady and too like in the numbers and too uh, uh, with that stuff. But yeah, like we said, like just chasing that actual happiness is like the new major key. And I also find with, with art and stuff too, it is really weird. And it's kind of why I keep getting back to the law of attraction. Like I, tr I go through these periods where I'm like, I don't believe in this shit at all. But it's just so crazy how it seems like as soon as I let those those kind of thought patterns go like shit opens up again and it's it's just wild i've seen it over and over again i'm worried about money worried about money and then i finally say to myself nope you got this man don't worry about money and then like a week later like so much shit comes in that i'm good yeah you know and it's like i don't know but yeah i i've definitely just wasted way too much time thinking of, of, of letting that kind of shit get in the way of my enjoyment and um yeah i'm just all about that life of trying to love yourself as much as possible and like not working on yourself to be better, but working on yourself to be happier on your day to day. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, I want to go back. This was a little while ago that you were talking about it, but it's stuck in my head about, you know, when you look at somebody else, like, you know, maybe somebody who's like a peer um, getting some kind of success, some form of success that you would like for yourself. And like that initial feeling of like jealousy and, you know, that kind of like hurt that you get from that. And it's not that you're not happy for them and it's not that you don't want success for them. And, you know, I just, I like, I've experienced that a lot in my life and like, and recently as well, just being in this position of like kind of stalled out in my career, at least that's, you know, how it can feel sometimes. And, uh, you know, I just want to like acknowledge that like, those feelings that that kind of like momentary spike of like you know bitterness like that's not who you are like who you are is the feeling that you have afterwards where you're like okay yeah like i i kind of wish that 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 i had that success right now but like also i'm genuinely happy for them and like you know the you is the person that reaches out to your friend and says hey congratulations that's really awesome i'm happy for you let's celebrate you know whatever like that's that's who you are like that momentary like bitterness is just kind of like a societal reaction. Like it's, it's like a trained reaction to like, they have a thing, I want the thing. And you know, like, it's just, it's, I, I just wanna like put that out there for anybody who has that too, that like, don't beat yourself up about those feelings either. Cause like, it, it's not who you are. Oh my gosh, I love that. And yeah, it's so true. And like, I'll tell you one thing I do like on a regular basis, if I have those thoughts, the first thing I do is I congratulate them. Like I'll, I'll go to that person and send them a text and make sure that like what I'm putting out, yeah. like you said, like that is the real me. And so like, it doesn't matter if I had that moment of like being like, oh man, um, cause it's not even about them. It's about you. That yeah. moment you're having is because you're like, what if I'm not good enough to have that? That's what it is deep yeah. down, you know? And it's like, it's just funny because you like, um, I always feel better after I do that. And it's like, even if I had those thoughts, like what I'm putting out in the real actual world, like who you are is mad support and mad love. And, um, 
and yeah, but it's, I feel like people, that's really funny because that's kind of a Buddhist concept. Like what you just said uh, is, is really realizing like there's this voice in your head that's the one that's talking to you all day long, being like, you got to do this. What if you didn't do that? What if this happens? Blah, 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 blah. But then there's the voice inside, like, that's just listening to it. Like, that's, like, your soul, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, and then there's what you actually do in the world. And, like, we all have thoughts all day long that are, like, the craziest thoughts. And, like, I feel like I've gotten caught up in this, too. Like, really thinking my thoughts define me at all, but you, it, they really don't. Like, you know, your thoughts are are happening all day long. It's just coming at you, coming at you, coming at you. And it's what you do, you know, yeah. that makes you who you are. And like, um, I just love that. Yeah. It's, it's, um, but yeah, no one should feel bad about this stuff. The truth is, is if you're not feeling this kind of shit and you're in this kind of industry, you're lying. If you say that's not what you go through. <laughs> I know people who are hugely famous and they still go through this shit comparing themselves to other people. And it's just the only difference is it's not new music Friday. It's the number one record in the country, right. you know, right. but it's just, it's the same shit over and over again. Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, know? look at, you know, the Grammys just happened and look at how many artists who weren't nominated, you know, made these posts about like, you know, these kind of like passive aggressive, like, well, you know, it's fine that I wasn't nominated because like the Grammys are bull and like the Grammys are bullshit. I do genuinely believe that, but I also think that it's funny and it like, it's, it's just very human, you know, for these people who are like these massive successful artists making a lot of money off of their work to still have this concern about like, well, I didn't get this recognition from this committee and like that really bothers me. And like, I, I feel like I have to make a statement about it. You know, like I, I think it's so funny. Yeah, it's weird. I'm, I'm like mixed on that too, because as someone who's fought so hard to be in this business and like some people have easier paths than others in everything in life. But like, you know, I, I feel like there is, I see a lot of musicians sometimes where it's a little just like, come on, man, like you got everything. But then with the Grammys, there's another side too, because I think that there is like a racial component to it sometimes, maybe not racial, but even like a cultural thing of like hip hop culture, for instance, is not understood at all. Yeah. And I know why, because like, uh, my uncle has been like a Grammy voter forever. And so like, and like the Academy Awards, they always send him all the free music and they all, but the truth is, is like a lot of the people voting in the Grammys are much older, yeah. you know? And so like, you're not really getting like a fair look at like what the hot music actually is, you know? Mm -hmm. Like you'll never see like 100 Gex, I bet, as like the best new artist, but like they're taking over the young generation right, right. now. I don't even know if you know who they are. I do, really yeah, I, I do because I'm music. on the internet enough and I was like, I was curious what they were because I kept seeing them come up on like Instagram and stuff. And yeah, I actually brought this up in a recent episode that came up again where I was like, just as an example of like, this is what the young generation is listening to. And it's, you know, it's silly of us as, you know, I mean, we're not, we're no longer the young generation. It's not like we're old, but like, it's silly of us yeah. to discount it as like, oh, like this, this sucks or whatever. Like, no, like people really like it and we should be paying attention. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Like that whole thing. I'm, I've never been like that with music. Like I'm going to be 85 and listening to the new robot music and like making, <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. I just love that. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's, the whole thing is like, it really just comes down to, you know, if you really want to be happy, look at where your priorities are, look at what you think, what, what you say to yourself on a daily basis. And like, the big thing is just know that like, you're not stuck in anything that you're in. That's like one of the beautiful things about life. Humans are so malleable, you know, that like, um, there's this other book too. Have you ever heard of, what is that book? It's, um... Oh man, I'm blanking on it right now, but it's a, about a guy who is in the Holocaust and he basically like figures out that like he was the people who he would like visualize stuff of his um, life and it would um, like he would it, to stay happy and to stay like in touch with his human. He wasn't with his wife, but he visualized him and his wife when they were off on like death walks in the snow. Um, and like, basically the whole point of the book is that like, he realized that the people who survived that were the ones who didn't lose hope and who stayed connected to those emotions, mm. you know? And it's like, he saw over and over again, every time someone got to that point where they were just like, they give up, then it would, shortly after their bodies would give in and all that. And like, it's, um, I don't know. It, it's crazy because, you know, you look at situations like that, that book really blew my mind. I wish I could remember, um, the name of it but again it was like one of those things where i'm like man if this guy on a death walk could find it within himself to to look back at these moments with his daughter and wife that he cherished and use that as the fuel basically reprogramming his mind to be like i'm not in the snow right now i'm you know staying in that 
And in the end, I believe his family was killed too, but he was able to use that the whole time to survive the camps. Yeah, that's so. incredible. That's incredible to like to not, I mean, you know, you could also see those same memories being a source of like despair for like having lost that. But yeah, to be able to use that as hope is, yeah, wow. It's it's really that was a crazy. I gotta. I'm I'm like trying to look up the the book right now as we're talking, <laughs> but I can't remember what it is. Yeah. Something about a light. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I usually I feel like I, I I would know just from cultural absorption, but this one is is escaping me. I'm I'm about to find it, but. <laughs> But yeah, all this, it's crazy. This was not where I was expecting the conversation to go either. <laughs> yeah, I really had but, no idea. And this has been delightful. We are like pretty much at the end of our hours. So uh, I should, uh, I should give you, you know, an, another opportunity to plug whatever you got to plug. Um, what's, where do we find your music and what's, what's next on the horizon for Dylan Emmett? Yeah. So I'm on everywhere. Like I'm on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, basically anywhere you can find music, look me up um instagram all that stuff but right now i'm doing like monthly releases so every song I, or every month i put out a song um and i'm also like this year one of my major goals is just to be putting out way more like live content because especially since there's no shows like yeah. i just want to be be performing again and stuff so definitely go and follow me on whatever your preferred social is and um get ready because i got a really a bunch of really cool stuff coming awesome dylan this has been I, so nice well, thank you yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Really quick, the book is called A Man's Search for Meaning by Victor E. Frankel, the one about the Holocaust and the Nazi death camps. Awesome. I'm going to check it out. And uh, yeah, that's th this is our book club recommendation for this episode. I know. What a way to end it. I know that's a little uh, heavy, but <laughs> it, honestly, <laughs> it's really, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. So Yeah, no, I, I think I probably will go find it. Maybe today. Who knows? Sick. Well, thanks so much for having me, MK. I'm glad to hear that you're doing well. Walking away, your words are lost on me. It's taking everything not to turn around. Throw it away, see if you'll let go of me when you're not holding me. I can see it now. Hey, when I lose. But if I'm gonna lose you, I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna lose it. I'm like, oh shit, I've been doing this a long time. Lost in my head, I don't care, I'm not gonna lose it. I'm not gonna lose this. I'm up all day, all night, we play. I'll put down my pride Don't look back because I mean it when I say it